And now, making his entrance to the ring, the fighting part of Liverpool. Undisputed champion Alexander
Ladies and gentlemen, from one of the great boxing arenas in the world, Manchester Arena, Manchester, England, Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing proudly presents the main event of the evening in association with K2 Promotions and live on Sky Sports Boxing and exclusively to the United States on DAZN. This is it, 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed Cruiserweight Championship of the World. And it's sponsored by William Hill, StubHub, and JD Sports, and sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, Stuart in Charge, Board President, Charles Giles. Also recognized for a championship contest by the IBF, the WBA, the WBC, the WBO, and the Bible of Boxing Ring Magazine. Timekeeper at the bell, Chris O'Connor. The three judges scoring from the United Kingdom, Steve Gray. From Russia, Yuri Kovsev. From Mexico, Alejandro Lopez. And in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, championship veteran from the United Kingdom, Terry O'Connor. And now, the officials are ready. The fighters are in the ring, and they are ready. Fight fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner with his trainer Dave Caldwell, wearing Everton blue and white, official weight, 14 stone, 3 pounds, 5 ounces. His professional record an excellent one in 32 fights, 30 victories, including 20 wins by knockout, two defeats, and one draw. Over the past five years, he's undefeated, winning 10 in a row, eight by knockout, undefeated as a cruiserweight. He's the fighting pride of Liverpool and all of the United Kingdom, the former cruiserweight champion of the world. Takashenko. He's wearing white with gold and officially weighed in at 14 stone, two pounds. In 2012, in the London Olympics, he captured Olympic gold. And now, as a professional, a perfect record. 15 fights, 15 victories, including 11 big wins by knockout. And he's ranked among the best as pound for pound, the best in the world. From Kiev, Ukraine, the reigning, defending, undefeated, undisputed, cruiserweight champion of the world, Alexander. tattooed on his back is of course a reference to his potent punch power and not in any way insensitive to the tragedy which unfolded in this arena when Ariana Grande performed Manchester will never forget this venue a sporting cauldron we've seen classics topsy-turvy tales heroes made and shocks aplenty is something in the air again 
as Tony Bellew attempts another tremendously hard mission. Or will Alexander Usyk prove his complete authority at cruiserweight before catapulting into the magic mix of the heavyweight division? The truth, as always, in the ring. A mighty matchup about to unfold. Wow, what an atmosphere, what a build-up. And here we are in the opening round, the anticipation. We're just on the edge of our seats. This will be tentative early on, I expect. Tony Bellew to box and move. Nobody's going to commit early. The huge physique of the terrific southpaw from Kiev in the Ukraine. How will Bellew come to terms with the southpaw style? He's fought five of them through his career. He had trouble with Bob Adjusov. He was uh, stopped by Adonis Stevenson and he got up off the floor to take out Maccabi for the world title at Goodison Park. He says the southpaw style won't be a problem. What about the momentum of Usyk, who's right approaching the top of his game? Tony Bellew, Eddie Hearn and the team say, is getting better and better. Yes, yeah, certainly been a lot more active use it. Yeah, this follows on from the Super Series. World Super Series, the boxing which he really cleaned up. A couple of really high quality level fights in that as well. Obviously, Tony Bellew coming off the back of the two David Hay fights. So, we're expecting him to come in here full of confidence. But he knows this mammoth test in front of him. Bellew grabbing centre ring and trying to double up the jab. He's always had an authoritative jab. Usyk has the angles and the movement and the rhythm. Yeah, Tony Bennett's got good ring awareness, he knows where he is also, you know, he's, he's got bags of experience, amateur and professional, and he knows if he's out of range, he's pretty safe. You know, it's only dangerous when they come together, but he can't sit back and just pot shot and hope to hope to steal a victory against somebody like Usyk, who's so technically proficient and so busy with his work. Doesn't really look for power, Usyk, but... Tony Bellew just seems really relaxed and confident and finding a hope for that jab early on here. It's a good start really from Tony, but Usyk really just finding his feet. Trying to get his own rage, Usyk, nothing landing at all just yet. But Bellew starting confidently. What will happen when Usyk unloads his first meaty combination? Bellew admitted he cannot let himself get backed up, gloves high, and then Usyk unload on him. Does he turn it into a dogfight early, or does he try and counter at range? I think I'd like to see him sit back at range until something happens. If it's not working at range for Tony Bellew, he needs to then try and close that gap. You see, we know can box so well behind that southpaw stance, and he's just trying to close that gap now, you see. Just fakes and pouring out of that right jab from the southpaw stance. Southpaws cause everybody problems. I don't care what you say, I mean, doesn't mean you always lose against them, but it's hard to get the spine against these left-handed fighters. It's a 
momentous night. There's Usyk's jab, just getting going here in the second. Yeah, it's a bit of a standoff between these two at the minute, and it's understandable. I mean, there's so much at stake. Tony Bellew punches hard. Usyk will be aware of that from, from watching the show reel. Knockouts that he'd been watching on the build-up to this, and Tony Bellew will know that Usyk can box and move very proficiently and, you know, with expertise. So, no standoff. Usyk will want to step in and walk into something. And Bellew really doesn't need to go for it. The weight of expectation, don't forget, is on Usyk. He's expected to win. He's got all the marbles, all the belts coming into this fight. So, Tony Bellew can kind of take his time for a couple of rounds and settle into this. And, and the bookmakers giving Bellew little chance. Most of the trade have predicted Usyk by late stoppage or on points. Good shot from Bailey there. Jamie Moore was telling us the other week. He fancies Bailey strongly. Adam Booth thinks he's got a really good opportunity here as he tries to work the Usyk body. Bailey talking about that in the build-up, that Usyk's been hurt to the body as an amateur. Listen, Tony Bellew getting close here with that, that looping jab that goes over the top of the southpaw jab. It's an awkward shot to defend against from the southpaw once it goes over that reach. But Tony looking for power to the body and landing. Also with a right hand there. This is good work from Tony Bellew early on. It's an excellent start. His feet here, he's bouncing lightly, he's, he's pointing with that southpaw jab and putting pressure on Tony Bellew here. He knows he's got to start to get to work and start to land some shots. So Bellew will be waiting with that right hand counter there, which wasn't far away from landing with full effect. I mean, we just caught the end of that one there, but as you said, draws closer, Bellew, Bellew will be waiting for that counter punch. And if he connects, it's going to cause problems, it really is. Alexander Usyk so supreme as an amateur, 335 wins, only 15 defeats, but it is different against a seasoned pro who's seen all stars lose the tricks at the 12 round distance. Usyk unbeaten, but he's walking into his right hand. 
hands. A good right hand counter there from Tony Bellew. Nobody expected this. Good head movement, and he just, you know, nonchalantly shakes his hands on his head. Well, caught a little bit tricky there, Tony Bellew. Got a little bit careless, and there's hand speed there, Music showing. Get this one, punches. And the crowd is so vociferous in their support and their booze. Many in Britain want Tony Bellew to triumph in his last potential fight, but many in the Ukraine and around the world, including his best mate Vasil Lomachenko, want Alexander Usyk to show what he really can do. Starting to warm up Usyk. Still a bit cat and mouse, Carl. Yes, yeah, bit of a standoff, bit cat and mouse, like you say. Tony Bellu waiting for the counter. Usyk unsure. He's not confident in committing with anything. And there's Tony Bellu on the attack there and putting Usyk straight away on his back foot. These right hands are the answer at the moment. And he's avoiding the big left at the southpaw. Utilising his feet really well, Bellu, when most people felt it would be the other way around. Yusuf's had it all his own way his whole career, and all of a sudden he's finding himself in the lion's den here in Manchester against Tony Bellew, who's got the backing of the crowd. This is unknown territory. Another great round for Tony Bellew. Once again, this is what I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting Tony Bellew to be out boxing Yusuf. Yusuf is supposed to be this supreme boxer. He just got out boxed for two rounds on the spin. I was not expecting this. I was expecting Tony Bellew to maybe pop shot, maybe throw one shot here or there. But like he's landing the jabs, he's landing the body shots, he's completely controlling the rounds. And he's got Usyk looking a little desperate in there. And again, Usyk will deal with that weight of expectation. And uh, the cat mouse game serving value well. He's not very busy, but it, it serves to make Usyk feel the pressure. He's got to create something. Everybody expects him to be this great fighter. Everybody expects all that. So he's almost in a rush now at this point in the fourth. And he still hasn't created much. Deep and he's stuck breath, 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 breath. 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 But can he work Bellew out? He's making it tricky here. And is he winning rounds, Bellew? He certainly is. I mean, the first round for me was even. You couldn't really score anyone to win the first round. A bit of a standoff, but. Oh, oh big left hand from Usyk. First real success from the world cruiserweight king. Bellew takes it. Well, if Bellew switches off against somebody like Usyk, who's very quick. On his feet, he's got fast hands, he doesn't look for power. Then he's looking for power, so that slows the pinches down. But doesn't Benny want it in a phone box if they trade? He does, he wants this up close, but he could do it getting it up close a bit later. And when Usyk slows down a bit, so the tactics from Benny were perfect. Usyk needs to get a foot over this fight, or he could run away from him, and then late on, it becomes Tony Benny's fight. But Usyk doing the right things here, backing up Benny. But he have to get that jab going, Usyk. Yeah, he's normally got a one-right jab. Alexander Usyk, who we saw give Vladimir Klitschko loads of trouble in sparring a few years ago. And this is better for the Ukrainian, and he's trying to set up the big left hand. Well, he knows he's got to change it on now. He's been probably told. Oh, that's a good right hand there from Tony Bellew. On the blind side of Bellew, I mean, Usyk's back was to me, but Bellew was in range of that right hand, and that's what he's looking for. That right hand right there. Big shot from Tony Bellew. Troubled halfway through the fourth round. Well, Tony Bellew knew that he landed that right hand then. He didn't rush in, he's still taking his time, but he won't take too many of them right hands to land to really put Usyk on his back foot in some serious trouble. Usyk trying to dig the punches in. Left hand gets through. Really engaging session this. Minute to go in the fourth. Nice right hand right. as well. And Usyk just nods. Appreciation. Well, really hot, they look now. I mean, Tony Bentley landed big shots, looking for the man landing, and as Usyk backs him up. Did they affect him? Is he too worried about this, Usyk? Has he been hurt? We don't know yet, but he certainly felt that power. If it's not bothered him, he will keep coming forward. Still inching forward, Usyk. 
if Tony Bellew lands big shots like that and, and doesn't have much of an effect and starts to feel the pace as it goes on, then it's bad news. Some good work there as Tony Bellew dropped his arms and you know got a bit careless. Nice left hand from Eason. Back comes Bellew. Both fighting their time in range. And listen to the crowd. Loving it. Well, Tony Bellew trying to match to me and say, look, I'm as good as you. Whether or not he believes it, he's trying to show that in there. Shots, but we can't make it the kind of fight where we're looking for an excuse to give Tony a, a round just as he lands a shot. I thought Tony landed a couple of good shots that round, but I thought Usyk won the round. Tony agreed with you, Paulie. I thought that was Usyk's best round. I think he really found his range. Bellew did have success, but Usyk growing in confidence as well. Um, Usyk landed a fantastic shot on Bellew early on in the fight, and then, and then Bellew turned the tables and started landing his shots yeah, and buckling the legs bit. of Usyk a couple Mate. of times. Switch back on, right? Saying get back on it, back on the tactical plan. Ten right seconds, back to that night call when you fought Lucian Boutte and everybody was writing you seconds off, including me, against an unbeaten self. And you turned the tables and stopped Boutte in this very round of fifth. That's why boxing is such a wonderful sport. You can you can look at all the paperwork and you know do the statistics on the build-up and look at the history, but at the end of the day, it's a two-horse race and anything can happen. But how much confidence will that give Usyk? The fact that he began to get to Bellew in the fourth. Well, Usyk was on his first share on the receiving end of Bellew's power in that round. He had moments of success, but Bellew landed some good power shots for me, and he was, he was enjoying himself in there, or at least trying to allude to the fact that he was enjoying himself. And Usyk doesn't seem phased, still coming forward, still trying to work. On them light feet behind that jab, but he needs to start putting punches together because Tony Bell is quite happy to sit back and look for that counter. Very intelligent man, Alexander Usyk. Writes poetry, loves solving puzzles. Great sportsman as well in different varieties. The world title wins. Marco Hook marries Bredis, Murat Gassiev. Stop Hook and went the distance with Gassiev and Bredis. Is Bellew better than that? Well, you can't you can't really say. I mean, styles, as we know, it's an old cliche, but they really do make fights. I mean, you look at the paper, you look at the um, you know the results of fights, and say, you know, he would probably beat him. But you know, nobody's giving Tony Bellew a chance coming into this. And, and look at the performance we're getting. Jusic now is having to force this and try and get something going. While Tony Bellew's able to sit back and land good combinations with a left hook from Tony Bellew. Lucy flawed in the amateurs with punches like that, but then he took out heavyweights like Joe Joyce. A machine, so many calling him Lucy. Looking for a lovely, quick countering left. The class is beginning to show of Alexander Rusik. He's getting going. Well, he's just starting to land with that jab. I mean, Tony Bellow on his first show success as well, but Usyk's able to jab and land a couple of backhand from a southpaw position. So Bellew knows now that the pressure is going to start heating up as this fight goes on. Good right hand from Bellew. What you six talking about there. Good sports, but you know, there's a lot of respect in there, Adam. There's been great respect all through the build-up. Right hand from Bellew. Just overreaching it. A lovely jab from Usyk. That's the danger. If Usyk finds a home for that jab, he'll be able to work. With combinations off that jab, Tony Bellew does not want to sit there and let a southpaw jab land. Still the right hand from Bellew, I haven't seen much of the left hook yet. Usyk not allowing that, but that's good stuff from Tony Bellew. And he's got a grip down on his gun shield there, Alexander Usyk. It's the fighting man from Liverpool against the polished, beautiful artist from Kiev. to Derek Chisora for his thoughts with Andy. Derek, you were one of the few that gave Tony a chance in this fight. Is it uh, planning out how you thought it would? Yeah, for the first rounds, you know, Tony was coming with some big punches, and right now he's kind of coming off his game plan. I don't know, I don't know why, but, you know, I, he's got a big punch in him because Usyk has felt the power already. So uh, we just know Tony, at any minute, he can just release that left hook. What were you shouting to him at the end of the round there? I was shouting to let it go on a moment because he's staying in the pocket too long. So when he's in the, on the corner, he's not letting his shots go. 
What do you think Usyk can do to get back in it if uh, you have uh, Bellew ahead in this fight? Ah, Usyk needs a knockout. They both need a knockout. Because right now, I don't know. I, don't, I, I can't even score it right now. But do you get the impression Tony's ahead? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> There's the treasure. Seconds out. Round six. Tony Bellew says he will take all of the five belts back to his family tonight. The ultimate challenge in what he promises is his last battle. 13 weeks of punishing training the pair. Carl has Bellew three up. Couldn't separate them in the first round, couldn't separate them in the fifth, but giving round two, three and four to Tony Bellew without any question, really. I scored it exactly the same as you, Carl. I definitely think those the first and the fifth round are the two, two types of call. I gave Tony the first three rounds, guys, and I haven't given him a round since. I gave Usyk round four, and I had the last round even. Usyk's still struggling to get control of this fight, even if he hasn't lost a round in my eyes since the third. Matt and Johnny behind us have got it 3-2 to Bellew. So close into the sixth round. Few people thought it would. Many talking about a, a masterclass from start to finish from Alexander Usyk. It's been anything but. Tony Bellew has not let him get set, settled. Nice work from Bellew as he moves around him. Yeah, good job then, just shifts off in circles, not straight lines. It's the straight lines, especially against the southpaw. If you go back, you're on the end of punches. Bellew knows exactly what he's doing. He's got bags of experience. He's, he's a top quality fighter. And, you know, you've got to sing the accolades of Usyk, but still a difficult task to try and break down Tony Bellew when he's waiting for you with that big right hand and left hook. He's teased us all week, hasn't he? Not telling us his tactics, saying, I'll just go and knock him out. But many believe that he would counter punch, that he would try and outbox the boxer if he could possibly do that. Because Dave Conwell's got the tactics right against David Hay a couple of times. Against McCarvey, it was more, you know, the thrill of the battle. But hats off to the team at the moment. Tony Pelly doing a great job with that jab. And as he's backed up looking for the right hand, he's able to jab again. But. He is getting backed up here, and the way this is going, if this carries on, you expect it to start to turn towards Usyk, because Bellew using a lot of energy, he's thinking a lot, and he's loading up with big power shots. Usyk, I feel, can keep doing this for longer periods of time, and as it draws on, it will go in his favour. He's certainly doing far more three to six than he did one and two, Alexander Usyk. Very tight online, a lot of people having their opinions. Very subjective, of course, scoring a fight. The three judges at ringside, ultimately the only ones that matter. Would Tony Bellew's team have taken this at the halfway point, and would Alexander Usyk's? Well, we'll, we'll see. I mean, it, it, it is very close. I've got Bellew ahead because round two, three, and four was good, but good right hand counter there from Tony Bellew, and that's the danger for Usyk if he sits there. But he smiles as that lands. I mean, he had a good round, Usyk, and now he's being backed up with right hands that are landing. Tony Bellew's tactics are good, he looks like he's breathing a bit heavy. And Usyk looks comfortable. Good oh. shot from Big Usyk right on the bell. But Bellew's legs just waddled. That was really careless of Bellew. Big, biggest shot of the round on the bell, on the bell the for that sixth round. Beautiful and round. The, the biggest one, and you know, that might have taken a little bit out of it. Up until that point, I felt that Tony Bellew was in the round, in the fight. He was enjoying himself in there, and it was Usyk who was struggling. He was looking for the big shots and couldn't find them. I was actually struggling to see who I was going to give the round to, and then Usyk literally commanded at the end of it with that last punch, almost dropping Bellew. Really careless there from Bellew, because the bell went, he dropped his gloves, and Usyk kept punching, and you can't stand in punching range, defend yourself at all times, and that hook clipped Bellew on the chin, and you saw the effect that had. I'm hoping that's not taken too much from Bellew, but that's a bad finish there to round six for Tony Bellew. In a tight fight like this, you can't afford to get shaken to your boots. You really can't. It can be the difference between the swing and the fight. Was that a key moment for Alexander Usyk as we enter the second half? WBC, WBA, IBF, WBO, 14 stone four, cruiserweight belts on the line, the white and yellow of Alexander Usyk, who has definitely stepped it up dramatically. Tony Bellew pot-shotting as he uh, lost some of the rounds, though, recently for British fighter. Usyk growing in confidence, 
and starting to really get his boxing into a pattern, Carl. He is, yeah, as at the same time, Tony Bailey looks like he's starting to tire and slow down and he's looking for power shots, which drains the energy. I mean, we're starting the second half of this contest now. I know Tony Villa's had a fantastic start, but I just feel that Usyk is setting up now for a great finish. Usyk with a left hand to the body. Does he feel that Bellew's weight making might be an issue? The first time in two years he's had to hit 14-4. Dave Colwell was saying he's done it perfectly, cut out the bread, all the rubbish, done it sensibly, but it's still a big ask. It's a massive ask, and I think David Hayes has got something to say here. Yeah, the, the body shots from Usyk in this round is, the, is a really big body assault from the start of this round. At the end of that round, his, his corner must have said, let's start working Tony Bellew's body. Once you get clipped to the chin, and your, your, your body becomes weaker, and they start having more effect. Also, also Lusik has changed his left hand a little bit. He's, he's sometimes whip, whipping it up on the side now as a hooking position, like that. That's how he hurt Bellew in the last round, and he's starting to throw it differently. I've got to be honest, I'm looking concerned for Tony Bellew here on his back foot as he sits on these ropes. He's looking a little bit phased and dazed and a little bit tired as Usyk backs him up here. Comes back with a combination, Bellew. But Usyk just smiles at him through that gun shield. And the left hand working a treat for Alexander Usyk. Yeah, this is the first time in the in the contest where I feel that Tony Bellew just breathing a bit heavy and backing up, looking for air. Maybe, I hope he's playing possum, but I doubt it against somebody of Usyk's quality because that would be dangerous. 11 knockouts on the slate for Usyk in those 15 wins. Both can punch. Bellew's right hook has worked a treat so far. When he's up against the ropes three or four times throughout the fight, he swung the right hook and countered and landed on Usyk as he was punching. Another right hand from Bellew, but it's single shots. And it can be deterring as well. When you land a big shot and there's no effect, it can put you off and, and you know, take that confidence away. And Tony Bellew's landed, he's connected with a couple of heavy shots here, and Usyk just comes forward with that smile. Yeah, he's backing Bellew up again into the neutral corner. There's that left hand. Showing a great chin at cruiserweight. Bellew and at heavyweight, as we saw against David. And now he's going for it. Tries to turn it into a dogfight, but he lost the round. Yeah, I, I, I give that round to Usyk. I think he controlled the majority, the large majority of the round. Tony Bellew looking like he was getting a bit of a breather on the ropes for the majority of it. Two things that are just the two that me. The mental pressure on coming off the ring has been very, very consistent, and that causes fatigue from Bellew, even though the pace of the fight has not been crazy as far as punch output. He's, it, it's fatiguing when a guy consistently cuts the ring off. That's one adjustment. The second adjustment, again, is his left hand Usyk throws. He has been throwing it mainly straight. Now he's starting to throw it from the side, as we see in this replay here. It's coming in an arcing way, and it's, it's changing the trajectory of the shot. Oof, while Bellew is making the same slipping motion where the straight left hand will go over his head, now that same slipping motion is getting him caught from the hooking left hand. And mind you, it's the same kind of the left hand that hurt him at the end of a couple of rounds ago. Cruiserweight champions Johnny Nelson and David Hay here. Evander Holyfield's many picks for the uh, best that's ever lived. Alexander Usyk wants to finish his cruiserweight reign here and then move up to heavyweight. That's what 2019 has mapped out. He wants Dillian White. He wants Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, any of those. First, he's got to take care of Tony Bellew, but it's looking brighter for the Ukrainian, much brighter. Yes, Alexander Usyk starting to wear down Tony Bellew now. We can see that the effects of Usyk's constant pressure on Tony Bellew is starting to wear him out. I mean, for Bellew to be able to throw power shots consistently over 12 rounds, the size of him, it's, it's a difficult ask. And, you know, the longer this draws on, the worse it gets for him. But he did the right thing at the end of that last round because he tried to make it a dogfight. Blinking a fair bit as well, Tony Bellew. I don't know if something's irritating him in his right eye. Keep a lookout for that. Slight bit of blood to the nose as well. And it's the body language, and it's the physical manoeuvring around the wing. Ring of Usyk now. Bellew backed into a corner again, but he will try everything he can, Bellew, even if he is losing these rounds. Backing off with blood coming out of his mouth. Looking a bit unsteady on the legs, Tony Bellew. Looking like he's wearing down. And these jabs and left crosses now, like that one, to send the blood splattering. Yep, yeah, big left hand 
from Alexander Usyk in trouble for Bellew here in the eighth round. Usyk with a beautiful jab and he's finding the chin of Bellew with more regularity. Yeah, really starting to get home now with these quality punches from Usyk and you can see Tony Bellew wearing down, still looking for that right hand, still gallant and still brave, but Usyk is really closing this gap with, with real, you know, minimum oh, effort. Oh, 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 Such a fantastic start from Tony Bellew for Usyk to then turn it around and finish in the way in which he did. You just have to give Usyk massive praise and, you know, accolades, he deserves everything. But Tony Bellew also, what a performance, what a start. But that left cross, that looping left cross there, which we've not seen yet on the replay, that put Tony Bellew down was a shot. Tony Bellew kind of doesn't know where he is yet, but he will watch that back and he'll realise. It was a spectacular shot from a fighter who seems to have so much. It came out of the blue, but at a time where Bellew just couldn't take something like that. And Adam, I'm gonna, I'm gonna disagree, it didn't come out of the blue. It was an adjustment uh, Usyk had made a couple of rounds ago, adjusting the way he threw that left hand. He kept whipping it around the side, while earlier he had been throwing it straight. And once he started making that adjustment, Bellew never adjusted back to it. He never made adjustment to the fact that Usyk changed his trajectory of the way he was throwing his left hand. It's the shot that hurt him at the end of one of the rounds. It was a shot that started landing consistently, and ultimately it was the shot that knocked him out. And he disguised it brilliantly, though. He'd worked on it, he found the opening, and boom! He was never getting up and going on from that, and Dave Cole will do the right thing. No, and, and Usyk, as he kept landing those, those wider shots, those wider shots, he kept landing those wider shots, he, he, he started throwing them a little harder. Yeah, I, the one thing I noticed in that round was the first time in the whole fight, Tony Benny clinched. He had a look in his face. He had a look in his face that he didn't have see before that. You know, his nose was bleeding, and he started, he, he took his foot off the pace. And, you know, Usyk seemed to grow in confidence. He seemed more solid, more accurate. I noticed after round five, David, that, you know, Usyk was coming into the fight looking relaxed and confident, and when them shots started landing, Tony Bellew was three rounds up on one card, one on another, and level on the third. But Alexander Usyk had the momentum and found the big punch to finish it. And you're right, Paulie, it was so clever. And, I, and honestly, and I'm looking at my card now, I had it even as well. I had it one round uh, for Bellew going into that that round there. I don't think anyone can argue. Tony no, Bellew had such a great start. Fantastic. It was a couple of rounds at least ahead going into that point. But I said that Usyk was starting to enjoy himself, starting to find his rhythm and get into the fight. And you saw that quality there. As Tony Bellew fatigued and started to show signs of wear and tear, Usyk was able to step on the gas and produce that kind of performance. Tony Bellew devastated there, but he's got nothing to be very, yes. you know, he should be very proud of himself. A very commendable performance by Bellew. He made the undisputed champion sweat. At 36 years old, when everybody counted him out, he made him sweat. Now, at the time of the stoppage, the momentum was going for Usyk, so the second half of the fight would have become very difficult for Bellew. But having said that, credit where credit is due. Bellew made Usyk sweat, and Bellew made Usyk think. Yeah, very good start with Tony Bellew. But Alexander Usyk adapted, and he showed his ring craft and ring experience. And it is devastating for Tony Bellew, who just wanted to go out on a high at the end. But what he's done in the last three or four years has been exceptional from where he was in the sport. And he can be very proud of those achievements. But ultimately, Alexander Usyk a special talent and a special finish. Well, Tony Bellew was boxing really well from the start. Well, there's the finish there that came at the end. And Bellew was tired there when that left cross landed. And there was, there was no way really of recovering. I'm, I'm glad this fight was stopped there because he would have carried on. And as Paulie said, he tried it a couple of times before. But 
It was disguised beautifully, Belly didn't see it at all. And disguised by a good jab, but again, it was the adjustment Usyk made, a key adjustment he made a few rounds ago, and Bellew, when a guy adjusts to you, you have to adjust back, and Bellew never adjusted to that wide left hand there was Usyk a, started throwing. There was a left cross that landed there momentarily that just shook the legs right before that big looping left cross landed, and you could see that every decent shot of Usyk that landed did cause problems for Tony Bellew. Yeah, the shot that um, he got hit with was shots he was slipping earlier on. His reflexes and time, it seemed to slow as his energy did. So that shot there, he probably could take that in the first or second round. But when you're tired, when you're moving away from the shot, you know, it, it has yeah, devastating effects, effects. The effects of them punches are amplified massively when you're exactly. tired. And you saw that, and there's the effect of that looping left cross that lands by the quality operator in Alexander Usyk. Tony Bellew left devastated on the floor there, but real magnanimous performance. Great, brave performance, nothing to be ashamed of. Magazine that's around his waist earlier this week before the press conference. Alexander Usyk, the future is very, very bright. Will he now become a threat to the heavyweights? I wonder what Anthony Joshua, Dillian White, Derek Chisora, who are here, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder will make all of that. Tony Bellew did his best, but ultimately was taken out by this man and this team. What a finish. What a finish. Well, Usyk was able to, to cope with one of the best performances from Tony Bellew early on. He was able to deal with Bellew's power and, you know, boxing masterclass that he was putting up and then come back and finish in the way in which he did. So it just shows you how good Alexander Usyk is. He really is a quality fighter. Let's hear from uh, Tony Bellew after his last fight with Andy. Tony, commiserations. It's not the fairy tale ending you so desperately wanted. But can you be proud of your performance tonight? I tried my best. I gave it everything I've got. Make sure you clap him, because he's an exceptional fighter. And he deserves all the awards in the world, man. Alexander Usyk is a great, great champion. And I lost to one of the pound for pound best that's ever done. He's fantastic. He beat me fair and square. I have no excuses. He's an amazing fighter. Alexander. 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 He is a great champion. The greatest man I've ever shared the ring with. Thank you. He deserves all the success in the world. I only wish you greatness. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Manchester. Great beat. And I love you. Thank you. Alex, if you can stay, I'm just going to finish with Tony and we'll come to you as the victor. Rachel, sorry to, sorry to interrupt this. You were ahead. You were ahead on two of the three scorecards. Yeah, man. You seem to grow tired. Uh, no, I tried to go for it. I tried to get him because I thought I might have been behind, but I don't know, man. I don't even know what round it was. What round was it? Eight. Yeah, it's only eight, man. There's so many more to go, but I don't even know what he caught me with. He's a brilliant fighter. He's so hard to pin down, and then when you nail him, he's good at it. He's exceptional, man. He's Olympic gold medalist, European amateur world champion. He's done everything. I fought the very, very best. He's just better than me. Just accept it, man. You come up against great people in life, and sometimes you lose. You've just got to accept it. Alexander Usyk is pound for pound material, man. I've got number. Great things to say about him. He's the best I've ever fought. He's slick, he's strong, and he's exceptional, Andy, give him his credit. 
I tried to, I can't even remember what round that was. Eight. Round eight, so I tried to put my foot down. I don't, I don't even remember half of the fight, so fair play, man. He's an exceptional champion. I have nothing but respect for him. Anyone who faces him is in a lot of trouble. Only the very best and only the very biggest will find a way to beat him. He's great. You achieved what only many can dream of. You won a world title at Goodison Park. Is that the highlight for you as you walk away? Yeah, man, of course. I won at Goodison Park. This man was a massive part. He believed in me, he stuck by me, he made Goodison Park happen. I can only thank him for the... Now, listen, don't boo him. Don't boo him. He's a great fighter. I appreciate him. He beat me fair and square. He's just a great fighter, but Eddie, thank you. He, Eddie Ian stuck by me all the way, and I've had some ups and downs, but I chose to do this one more time, and it hasn't worked out, man. He's an exceptional fighter, Alexander Usyk. I only wish greatness for him. I know now why he's so great. European, world, Olympic gold medalist, unified champion. I tried my best, Dan, but I'm just not... I'm a, I'm a world-class fighter. That's the difference between world-class and... The, at an elite level. It's heartbreaking, man, because I gave this everything I possibly had, but it didn't work out, so... Alexander, I only wish you well. You are a great, great champion. Is that the end for you? Oh, it's definitely the end. Come here. Alexander. <laughs> you are a great, great champion. Thank you. The best person I've ever shared the ring with. So tactically brilliant, strong, he has everything. I only have praise for him, and you are a great, great champion, and I only wish him well. So, the good champions, they become with a good opposition, only this way. In many ways, did he bring the best out of you tonight? Uh, maybe today, yes. Today. Maybe today, yes. yes. <laughs> you came with the belts, you leave with the belts. Were you surprised that Tony starts in the fight? Ты приехал с поясами, уезжаешь с поясами. Ты был удивлен началом поединка, то как вел себя Тони? No. Я ждал этого. Я ждал этому парню нечего терять. I was waiting for that. Uh, I knew he would do it like that because he has nothing to lose. Did you feel that you were slowly breaking him down? Ты ощущал, что ты медленно его ломаешь? может быть, я промолчу. I would rather keep silence. <laughs> Let's talk about your future. You achieved everything possible as an amateur. You've came here, you leave as undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. Is it heavyweight next? Давай поговорим о твоем будущем. Ты олимпийский чемпион, ты undisputed champion cruiserweight. Что дальше, heavyweight? Знаете, что я на данный момент хочу? Я провел очень сложный год. Сложнейший, наверное, год, который у меня был. Я на данный момент хочу максимально отдохнуть со своей семьей, детьми и поправить свое здоровье. А тогда мы можем о чем-то разговаривать. You know what? I had the most difficult year in my life. Now I want to relax, I want to spend time with my family. And only after the rest I can speak about the future. Alex Krasiuk, you're also acting as promoter here as well. All the talk in the build-up has been if Alexander was to be victorious, would he come back and fight Anthony Joshua or one of the other British heavyweights? What's your reaction to that? <laughs> I can tell by your smile. Uh, with this man standing right next to me. Eddie. Eddie. Um, Eddie. <laughs> Eddie. Eddie Hearn. Yeah, we can do much in boxing. And uh, bringing Usyk to heavyweights will bring some new spirit to heavyweight division. And he definitely needs to fight Anthony Joshua. What adjustments would you make to your style and your approach moving up to heavyweight? Yeah, of course it's enough. I will have uh, another extra pasta for dinner. <laughs> Is that your, your goal now, to uh, become undisputed heavyweight champion? Is that your goal to become absolute champion of super tiger? Of course, you have to set your goals. Do you understand? We are people. If we don't set our goals, if we don't move, 
Мы просто остановим, мы, мы трухнем, мы умираем, мы должны ставить себе цели и идти к ней. We are just uh, common human beings. We need to put uh, goals in front of us and we need to go towards them, to move towards them. Just finally, you obviously enjoyed yourself here in the UK. How do you reflect on the whole experience? Расскажи о своем опыте, вот как ты провел время свое в королевстве. Вообще я очень великолепно провел время в королевстве. Я вообще знаю весь центр, я его весь обходил. Фанаты, люди просто останавливали меня, фотографировались. Куча, большая толпа людей останавливала меня, фоткалась. Мне вообще, если честно, нравится в Британии, потому что я здесь завоевал. Моя мечта здесь сбылась, моя цель сбылась в, э, в Британии. Это олимпийское золото. А сейчас я уже боксирую здесь профессионалом. Это же офигенно. I did enjoy my stay in the UK. Uh, now I know the city center of Manchester because I walked it across <laughs> through. And uh, act, uh, my best love country is England because uh, most of my dreams came through here. I became the Olympic champion in London and now I'm fighting here for the undisputed championship in Cruiserweight. I love this country. Congratulations. Thank you. Eddie Hearn, just want to get your reflections really. Uh, I presume you're immensely proud of, of Tony Bellew. Was he doing better in the fight than you thought he would? Or did you believe he was capable of that sort of performance against uh, the undisputed Cruiserweight champion of the world, Alexander Usyk? Yeah, I thought he won the first three rounds and he was starting to fade a little bit. Whether the weight made a difference, he just come up against a great, great fighter in Alexander Usyk. But I think tonight should be, you know, a reason to remember a great fighter and a great man, a man who's been a great servant of British boxing. He's given absolutely everything to this sport, and I'm so pleased. Sorry. I'm so pleased that people got to see the real Tony Bellew. You know, he used to be a, a loud mouth scouser who used to struggle to make weight. He's gone on to fight the very best in the world, achieve everything in the sport. We are so proud of him. The team are so proud of him. I know Sky Sports are so proud of him. You know, he will go down as a true great of the sport, in my opinion. But more importantly, he's one of the best men I've ever met. And I promise you tonight, he gave everything for the crowd. I want to thank everybody for supporting Tony Bellew over all these years. It means the world to him. And I'm pleased that he finally got out of the game what he deserves. He's secure for life, and he can leave the sport knowing that he fought the very, very best. He didn't duck anyone. He won British, Commonwealth, European, World Championships, and he lost to a great undisputed champion. Honestly, Tony Bellew deserves all the credit in the world, and he's, he's a wonderful individual. One word on Usyk, because obviously you are working with him now. Yeah. Are you looking to bring him? He's obviously said he's going to move up to heavyweight. You have some very good heavyweights on your books. Will you look to match him with those? Yeah, you know, we'll sit down with the team, but tonight's about a great fight. Two great individuals. It was some of the highest level stuff I've seen live. And um, there's plenty of plans for Alexander Usyk, and we'll sit down and sort those. But. For now, I think we should, uh, you know, pay tribute to Tony Bellew, a great man, a great fighter, who's given this sport absolutely everything. Well said. Thanks for talking to us.